Hello, this is the Palmistry Podcast, episode number one, a five-minute talk about palm reading. My name is Graham Thompson, and today we will discuss the index finger by referring to art history, ancient myths, astronomical observations, and excerpts from the Laws of Scientific Handwriting by William G. Benham. In the early 16th century, artist Michelangelo painted the creation of Adam on the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel. In this fresco, we see God's right arm outstretched to impart the spark of life from his index finger to Adam's index finger. I believe that Michelangelo's image illustrates the special role of the index finger. The index finger is a pointer, but more than that, I believe it is a way in which we demonstrate our personal power. We wag the finger in protest, insisting on our point of view, but why then do we call it the finger of Jupiter in palmistry? Many palmists believe it is a reference to the Roman god Jupiter, a powerful god who threw lightning bolts down to Earth. Others believe it is named after the largest planet in our solar system. Perhaps the meaning of Jupiter is embodied in its movement. Check out the astronomical animation, movements, and visibility cycles of the naked eye planets by David Colarusso in the show notes. We see Jupiter moving slowly and purposefully as if it is on a quest. The idea that the finger of Jupiter represents a large adventurer is echoed in the classic palmistry text, The Laws of Scientific Handreading. I will paraphrase Benham's work as we read your palm. Please look down at the hand that you write with, your dominant hand, and look at your Jupiter finger. My first question is, how long is your Jupiter finger? Is it longer than your ring finger? If the answer is yes, Yes, you have a long Jupiter finger. We will read this as you are on a quest, or more precisely, you are seeking personal power, authority, and leadership. As we look at your Jupiter finger, I ask, is it as long as your middle finger? If it is, then you have a very long finger of Jupiter, and your power of Jupiter increases proportionately. Let's have a closer look at your Jupiter finger. Please hold your dominant hand in front of your face with the fingers pointing up to the heavens. You can see that it has three parts, the tip or top, the middle and the bottom. Generally, the top is the shortest, the middle is medium in length, and the bottom is the longest. There is a rule that you can use in assessing the lengths of the three parts. It is described in the text Drawing from Observation by Brian Curtis of the University of Miami. The rule states that the top is roughly 60% the length of the middle part, and the middle part is roughly 60% the length of the bottom part. The rule is called the golden mean or golden proportion. Examples of design using the golden mean can be found throughout the universe. But what if your finger of Jupiter does not follow this rule? As palm readers, we train our eyes, like an artist, to observe unusual proportions in the hand. We must ask the question, what if the top part of your finger of Jupiter is longer than expected? This is significant. We could read this as you are seeking power through mental pursuits, Possibly your intuitive abilities are strong or you have an inspirational nature. Correspondingly, what if your middle part of your Jupiter finger is longer than expected? We would read this as you are seeking power through practical affairs such as business or politics. And finally, what if your bottom part of your Jupiter finger is longer than expected? We could read this as you are pursuing a powerfully sensual life. But how is it possible, you may ask, given that the Jupiter finger is named after a noble Roman god. Well, unfortunately, Jupiter was never faithful to his wife. We can see in the show notes the paintings of Jupiter's seductions of various Roman goddesses at palmistrypodcast.com. In a more contemporary example of infidelity, check out the Ashley Madison website in the show notes. It promotes adult affairs. The model on the homepage uses her Jupiter finger to shush website visitors not to tell. Today's podcast has included included some information about the Jupiter finger. We have discussed the length of the finger, but not its width. We haven't talked about the shape of the fingertip or its knuckles. There is so much more to discuss. This will come later. Also, get your free palm assessment, a short personal report on your love, money, and life purpose at palmistrypodcast.com. P-A-L-M-I-S-T-R-Y-P-O-D-C-A-S-T dot C-O-M. This is is Graham Thompson signing off. Bye for now.